chapter 6, verse 10, starting there. Finally, my brethren, notice, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Paul the apostle begins to acknowledge the things that he wants to share with us. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil, against his schemes, against the trickery that he tries to come against you. For our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness and authorities and against the powers of this world of darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Paul begins to tell us to get ready for the battles that are ahead of us, for the things that we encounter. And we don't realize that we just become creatures of habit. I'm unhappy, I'm not satisfied, things are going on, but you know what, I, I take it like a man, and I, okay, and I, one shot after another, and we feel like, well, that's just a part of life. And we don't realize what do we do when our back is up against the wall and we look at our lives. Things are changing. Our lives are changing. Our families are changing. Maybe your finances are changing or your health is changing. Things that are going on that have you on edge. Maybe the relationships. But whatever it is, it's taking a, a toll on us at times because we're not concentrating. Yet, with no obvious escape, we just can't run away from it. But I have the question is how do we respond to those feelings that were negative towards us? Those feelings that we know that we don't want them. Those feelings that we deal with. You look at families are suffering tremendously right now. And people are wondering, what's going on? I don't have that love. I don't have that, that feeling no more. There's too much pressure. There's pressure in my home. Everybody's on edge. There's no joy. There's no comfort. There's no intimacy. There's nothing. There's just squabbling and arguing with one another. Instead of looking for the glory of God and finding the joy of life, we're just kind of maintaining because we're not finding the joy and the blessings. Whether we're, we're looking at something that we're, we're feeling lonely or depressed, that we're going through a season in our life that is very hard. Why does it seem that Satan has so much power over us? When he doesn't, I tell you this all the time, why does it seem that way? That people want to give up right away when they feel the pressure of the enemy and say, oh, forget it. No, that's when we fight. That's when we stand. That's when we come against it in the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Yes. But yet, little by little, the enemy comes into your homes, into your privacy of your home and and your family, and he begins to chip away, chip away. Spiritually, you can't handle it. And pretty soon you just look at life and you say, I'm going to give up, forget it. This is too much for me to bear. People are getting divorced like crazy. People are unhappy. Children are going through a season in their own life that is difficult for them to find a way to live on their own. Because they have to depend on their mothers and fathers because there's so much that's going on. It's a difficult time for everyone that's going through a season like that. The more people you have in the home, there's more anger, there's, there's more frustration. And yet, you know, everybody's on a short fuse and you begin to wonder, what's next? What are we going to do? Instead of having the joy of the Lord that becomes your strength, we begin to submit to the things of the world. We begin to look at the world and say, well, it wasn't that bad when I was there. And then so I want to take something to help me calm my nerves. That's not what God is saying. 
we have to realize that those are strongholds that come into your home, that come into your family, that come into your finances, that come into your children. Those strongholds that come into your mind, to your heart, to your, to your physicalness, you know, your, your health that you begin to fight and say, I never had that before. I don't understand that. Things that you would never imagine. You know, you look at yourself and you go to the doctor and he begins to examine you and you find out this is wrong and that is bad and, and you go, whoa, what happened there? You don't realize how time takes a toll on you. And it is, it's difficult at times. You know, and, and we go because we're accustomed to feeling good and, and young, but then all of a sudden things begin to change. And you begin to question God. Well, Lord God, what's wrong with this? Why am I going through that? You know, I had my doctor call me and says, we want you to take a, a, a series of lab works. And I said, okay. So I went down there and they, they drew the blood and everything else. And so I'm wondering, I wonder what the heck it is. And it was a blessing because she called me back and she says, all your lab came out good. You know, so I said, thank God for that, you know. Because you don't know. At my age, you don't know. You know, and that's the thing that God, it's a stronghold. If you have something that's wrong, it becomes a stronghold. And they're real. It's a real spiritual sense. It takes a toll on you at times. And the work of the devil that begins to undermine and chip away at your life. Look what's going on. You're going to get worse. Look at this. Look at that. And, and then you begin to look and say, well, I'm not the same any longer. And things are happening, and I'm not feeling as good. And the devil says, that's right, you're not. And pretty soon you're believing a lie from the enemy. And that's why it's important that we understand that the enemy can only work as long as you allow him to. I'll say that again. The enemy can only work in your life if you allow him to. If you allow him to come in and disrupt your home and your families. Because you're not making a stand and you're not coming together say, in the name of Jesus, there's a door. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord splits you. Now get out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, you have no place here. You're not welcomed here. We don't need you here. You claim peace and love and joy in the Holy Ghost. You ask God to begin to bless you and bless your homes. In other words, the door of the person's heart can only be open from the inside, not from the outside. Only when we give in to the temptations, to the lures of the enemy that he throws that lure out there. And, and there's so much dysfunctional beliefs and feelings in the home and frustration and anger. And you look at one another and Things begin to happen and pretty soon there is no joy with no one because we're struggling about nothing. Because we're not coming together as a family and sitting down and begin to pray over the situation that God has given us the power to overcome the wiles of the enemy. But we're not coming together. Therefore, the enemy watches for a way and an opportunity to come in and to begin to undermine and to chip away. To gain entrance into your life. And how we can get a foothold in your life and begin to work against that foothold to destroy you. To bring doubt and feelings of, of you know, just despair in your life because you're not feeling the joy of God. You need to understand you've got the, the battle won if you only come to Jesus Christ. The enemy will go when you establish that calling from God. When you say, Lord God, today I'm going to see. You know, don't allow. Don't allow him to get a foothold in, in your home. He will turn you against one another. And then he'll turn you against somebody else. And pretty soon everybody's walking on eggshells. Everybody's upset. Everybody wants to lash out at one another. That's not the way God intended it. That's not the way the Lord wants us to act. If we have the power... And we know the blessings of the Lord. Strongholds are real. 
Just like you see the blessings of God, it's easy to say, oh, I'm blessed when everything is going good. Oh, what a blessing. Look what Lord is, the Lord is doing. That is great. But when things are not going as good as you would like them to come and, and the things that are happening, you have doubt. You didn't have doubt when the things are coming. Oh, that's the Lord. The Lord blessed me. Oh, I got a new car. Oh, that's God. Praise God. Or by, oh, praise the Lord. God is good. He opened the doors and hi, 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 hi. But then when they're going bad, you don't want to talk about it. You just, oh, man, you know, what, what happened, Lord God? And you begin to doubt and you begin to question God. And sin comes into our lives because we're questioning the things that God can do in our life. It's only a matter of time that the enemy will come to destroy your marriages. He'll come and destroy your families. And it'll be a place where nobody wants to be at. Because the atmosphere is rotten. Because we allowed the enemy to come in and destroy the atmosphere in the home. And this should be a home of joy and peace and love and blessings when we know the Lord God. It should be a place where I love the Lord. Where we have faith in one another. And the joy of God becomes your strength. And you look at your children. You're an example to them. They can see what you're telling them. And find the hope and find the joy in reaching your children and being an example to them and, and sharing from your heart and say, yes, but stop and think. I only want the best for you. It gives you a chance to help them as parents to come together as you pray together and believe that God is going to open the doors that no man can shut. That you're going to pray that God is going to help you, that God is going to strengthen you and your family so that you can endure. You know, the holidays are coming right now. And do you know that more families won't get together because siblings can't get along with one? Oh, I hate her. That's your sister. I hate her. And I hate him. And, and, and we dislike and we, we can't be together because of feelings of anger and hatred, of remorse, of the things that we experience. And who suffers from that? It's the family. Instead of coming together and saying, in the name of Jesus, praise God, thank you, Lord God. We want to be able to enjoy this time. This is the time of the year for peace and love and joy as we come into the courts of God. To give him praise and glory as we enter into the blessings of the Lord to recognize the Lord. But the devil is right there trying to undermine you. The devil is right there trying to take away your joy. Because he wants to discourage you. We have no money. We don't have this. And we don't have that. And that's the first thing we come against each other. Instead of saying we're a family. We are going to pray together. We're going to ask God for the blessings and deliverance. That God is going to give us the joy back in our hearts. That we're going to overcome the wiles of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Glory to God. You see, the only thing the devil wants to do, he wants to affect your, your character. How can I destroy your character? How can I destroy your purpose? The purpose in which God has called you so that you are happy in serving the Lord, happy in doing the thing that God is, is calling you to do, but you can't be happy because you don't have a purpose any longer. Your purpose is to concentrate on Him. Your purpose is to look what He's doing to you. Your purpose is to look and see what He's doing to your family. The purpose is I hate everybody. That's not the purpose that God has called you. Your purpose is to fight Him. Your purpose is to say no weapon formed against me can prosper. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You're nothing but a foul spirit of inequity that's trying to come in and destroy and undermine my home. Do you realize that so many Christians are in a battle every day and they don't even realize it? They just get beat up, beat up by the enemy. Again, their homes, their families, their health, their, their finances, everything you can think of. Your jobs, 
He just beats you up, beats you up, and you just take it because you don't know how to fight back. Because you don't see him, you don't believe it. And yet he's trying to destroy you, but you don't fight back. And there's no peace, there's no love, there's no understanding. Yet the Lord has the power to demolish, to destroy the strongholds of the enemy. And the footholds that he wants to place in your home. Do you know how many people are struggling? I mean struggling with that. You know, it's, you can't go to sleep thinking that and wake up thinking that. Without thinking it's going to have an effect on you. You have to be able to release it. You have to be able to just say, Lord God, I'm going to pray and I, I want this gone. I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I want my love back. I want my purpose back to glorify you. I want my purpose to find out what you've called me to do. Purpose is everything. Until purpose is discovered, life has no existence and has no meaning. I need to find my purpose and why God is has called me, why God has blessed me to do what I'm doing. Because he purposed it from the foundations of the world. Even before you were a twinkle in your father's eye, you were already given a purpose. A purpose to fulfill. That is a part of our job. It's to find our purpose and know that God is going to help us. And I'm not going to let the enemy destroy my character. I'm not going to let the enemy destroy my purpose that I want for God. And yet I know that the Lord has the power to demolish, to, to destroy, to eradicate the enemy. But you have some people in the family that don't agree with that. They don't understand that. You need to pray for them. You need to pray that God is going to touch them, that God is going to heal them, that God is going to do a work in their life. If you want the joy of God in your life, then you have to come before God so God can give you the blessings. Especially young couples. You cannot start off on your journey in life and have all these things that you've got to face because it's going to destroy your relationship. It's going to destroy who you are. Even for older couples. Older couples are going through a tremendous thing as well because now they're taking on the rest of the families. It's a, it's a new thing today. Everybody's doing that. All the millennials are back home. And the family saying, whoa, wait a minute, I'm overwhelmed. That's just a part of life. Hello. Am I lying? Hello. And you look at all the millennials that you are going back home and say, well, I got a place here. I was joking with my dad. I said, dad, you know what? They're going to take my house. And he goes, what? They're going to take my house. And well, I guess you got to come back home. <laughs> I left home when I was 18 years old. And I never went back. I never had to go back with my, my parents and say, here I am. Here's my family. I'm in and out. Never did. I had to work two jobs, three jobs. I did what I had to do, but I never did that. And I thank God for that. Amen. It puts a strain on you, but you know what? Glory to God. God is real. But it was just, it, it was kind of cute the way he just said, well then, go back in your bedroom. You got your bedroom here still, you know. And he's all alone in this big house by himself. So we just started laughing about it. But it's a blessing that, that we have that relationship, you know. And, and we want to be a fragrance to one another and not an odor, you know. We, we joke and everything else. Like you, you need to be able to find that place in your life where you know Otherwise, the enemy will come in and undermine and destroy. You're young, and, and you want a future, and you want your journey to be blessed, and you want to be able to see the fruit of your labor. You want to be able to see your family growing. You want to be able to see the blessings of God. Then get into the Word of God. Get into the understanding of the Lord God. Know that the enemy is real. Pray and plead the blood before you go to sleep and pray and plead the blood when you wake up and say, Lord God, here I am with you right now. You know that God can give you the strength and the power to overcome because you want the joy. You see, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's the power that's within me is the joy of God. 
that I can say, yes, Lord God, I can. Well, I used to be able to click my heels, but now I don't know. But in those days, you get jump up and click your heels. That is the power of God. That is the joy of the Lord that gives you strength, that gives you power. And that is a blessing. All of us want the joy of God. And even though we don't have all the riches in life, you still have joy. And as long as you have that joy, the rest doesn't matter. The rest really doesn't matter because you have the joy that God has given you. And God has elected you. God has blessed you. And Paul the Apostle deals with us on this situation. And that's why I'll be starting off in the book of Ephesians to teach it uh, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and precept upon precept. Because I believe that it, there's so much that is here. Marriage, the family, warfare, the Spirit of God. The, the life of Jesus. There are so many things in this six chapters that give us an understanding of the future, of the church, of us as the people of God, to know exactly what Jesus is requiring from us. So it's hard at times, and I realize that it's very hard at times to respond. To respond for the things that God is saying, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And you go, wait a minute, Lord. I mean, it's not in me. I, I don't feel it. I, I, I don't have that in me. That's why it's important that we find our purpose because if we don't, we're going to shrink back in unbelief. No, that's not for me. No, no, you're not calling me, Lord God. We're going to shrink back in unbelief. We're going to be discouraged. We're not going to want to take on the new challenge because we're discouraged because we see our life. And it's hard to take on some new dimension. We're disillusional. We don't understand. We want to give up. We don't understand about going out and doing the work of God. We don't understand about giving it all to the Lord. You see, we, we want to look at things in a different realm. And God said, no, trust me and see what I can do in your life. If you trust me, I'm going to bless you. You know, for some of us that are older, you need to find that joy. Life is passing you up, I mean fast, fast. And it just seems like it's here and it's gone. It's here and it's gone. And that year seemed like it went by like you, you were meditating a little bit and all of a sudden the year's gone. No one knows what God has for us. No one knows how many years we have on earth. And if we're fighting, and if we're struggling just to maintain, where is the joy of the time that you have here together? And saying, Lord, I need you more than life. I need you more than life. I, I don't want to shrink back in unbelief. I want to move forward. I want to be able to bless you. I don't want to be discouraged. I don't want to feel like I'm passing that on to my children. I don't want to pass that on and leave a legacy to my children that I'm discouraged and life's a bummer and all the stuff that's going on. Oh, man, you know, what a, what a, what a heartache. No, you want the joy of God and the blessings. You don't want to be discouraged. And when you look at conflicts, take care of them in the name of Jesus. Confront it in the name of Jesus. Because the storms in our life are real. The storms in our life are real. There are things that really happen. For some of the people that today that have lost everything through the fires, their dreams, their hopes, their ashes, everything that they worked for, everything that they accomplished, nothing to show but ashes. And you go back in the Midwest and you see the people with the tornadoes destroyed, demolished, the hurricane demolished. The flooding demolished everything they worked for, everything they planned for. And you look at their lives. And yet, you know, the holidays are coming and to look back and say, we used to have this. We used to have that. It's all changed. Life sometimes seems unfair. I'll say that. Sometimes life seems unfair. But sometimes it's because God is trying to get our attention. And I say with all these things that are occurring around the world, the problems that are happening everywhere and here in America, again, 
I've shared before, if it's not affecting you, you can care less. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, that's too bad. No, it will affect you sooner or later. Sooner or later, it's going to affect us. And that is the thing that we have to realize, that we would be sensitive to the needs of others that are going through these seasons in their life that become so difficult. It's a tragedy that they face these things, but that is a time for them as a family to come together and pray. That's when prayer becomes real. Because they've got to pray for the, where they're going to stay. They've got to pray for where they're going to get their clothes. They've got to pray for what they're going to do. And maybe their businesses and their jobs have been wiped out. As we've seen so much of that taking place. And everything that you work for, gone. And you have no insurance. You talk about a heartache. And America, sue happy. You know, everything that, ah, oh, I'm going to sue you. Ah, oh, I'm going to sue you. America is just so happy, and that's the problem we have as well. And that's why we have to look at these things and not be delusional in the things and say, well, I'm going to give up. I'm going to be strong and believe and put God first. Put the Lord first as you begin to pray and not be discouraged because those battles that are raging within your life, whatever it is, whatever it is that's taking away your peace and your joy and taking away your love, that's a real battle in your life. Whether it's a big thing or a small thing, you're going through a season in your life that is difficult. And you want to get away from it because it'll get bigger. It'll amplify and get bigger and bigger until it consumes you. And then when it consumes you, you're going to be a person that no one, no one, no one wants to be around because you're going to infect everybody with that disease. And God wants us to be free. As I share with you, the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you look at these adversities, say, ha, 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 God is good. I'm going to win no matter what. You can't lose. You are a child of God. And we don't lose because we know who Jesus is. And if something happens, we know where we're going right now. Hallelujah. Paul the Apostle said, hey, it's far better for me to be with the Lord than be here. But I'm only here because of you, because of you people. But for me, it's no big thing. Well, we're going to take you to the gallows, and we're going to cut your head off. Go for it. You don't bother me. I know where I'm going. That's the thing. We, it's it's kind of hard to look at that. But, you know, to say everybody wants to go to heaven, and I tell everybody jokingly, everybody wants to go to heaven. Raise your hand. Everybody raises their hand. They want to go to heaven. I said, but there's one prerequisite. You all got to die before you go to heaven. And nobody wants to die. So we said, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. And, and yet the Lord has given us even that as a scapegoat, as a blessing that we can recognize the Lord God. And that's what we want is to be able to say, I'm getting older. We want to escape. We want to escape. But sometimes you can't because the enemy is so profound and we live in a world of tension, a world that's just turn on the news. The news is uh, Trump, 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 Trump. Ask Angela, Trump. <laughs> the world, the world is crazy. Instead of being happy, and joyful it's crazy with tension and stress you get stressed out looking at the news man you just look at everything like oh my god the real events that are happening and yet when you see the sickness and the disease and the problems that are occurring so what is our goal in life and that's to try to make your home a place where your children will remember the blessings of the Lord God. A place where you can grow and be blessed and your children will grow up saying, man, what a blessing. And teach them how to help you. Not in a negative way, but in a positive way that they could say, I want to help you, mom and dad. I want to be here and I want to help. That's our goal, to find escape from the enemy. So my mind will be clear so I could be okay. I want to escape the world's conflicts. 
the things that the world wants to throw at me and the tension that brings hatred and anger and discord and you wake up mad and you go to bed mad and then you look at your family and they feel the same way and no one gets along in the house. That's not living. You're just existing. But you're not living for the glory of God. And again, there is no purpose. We need to remember that the devil comes uninvited. He comes to you uninvited. And the only way that you're going to get rid of him is to rebuke him right back to hell where he belongs. Amen? Amen. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Command him to leave. That God is greater in your life. Take your authority. Take your position. Believe and say right now in the name of Jesus, I'm going to stand against the wiles of the enemy. No matter what, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I take my authority against you to fight you, destroy you, to eradicate you out of my life. I want the joy of the Lord to be my strength. I want to dance on the mountains of the glory. And the Lord will put the devil under your feet, the Lord says. Hallelujah. you got to exercise the blessings of God. you got to exercise the glory of God. Believers, even though we're in a warfare, we've got to know how to fight back. We've got to know how to come against the enemy. Don't let him scare you. If we fail to realize the reality of spiritual warfare and experience, we're defeated. If we fail to know that what we're up against, know your enemy. Fight your enemy. Otherwise, we will be defeated. Satan opposes all believers. He hates you. He hates you to think for yourself. He hates you to call on the name of Jesus. He hates you because he doesn't want you to be victorious. And that's why we must understand our position and oppose him in many ways. You know, some of the direct things that he does are obvious to you, to your home, to your family, to your loved ones. And you go, how can I get rid of this? And yet, Paul tells us, finally, my brother, verse 10, chapter 6, be strong, not weak. Be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God. So that you, notice, can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Put on the armor of God that you can fight the devil. Don't let him destroy you. Don't let him come against you. Notice verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. If it was against flesh and blood, well, you would want to fight that individual. But this is above that. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of, and against the authorities and against the powers of darkness. Notice of this world and against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms. The things that we're facing, therefore, verse 13, put on the full armor of God so that when, notice, the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything that you can do, stand against the enemy. Hallelujah. Fight. In other words, the Lord is saying, learn to fight. Learn to take your authority. Just like God gives you authority to pray. Just like God gives you authority to lead someone to the kingdom of God. Just like God gives you authority to cast out demons. He gives you authority to cast out the devil from your home. When you believe, you begin to do that. Stand firm, he says in verse 14. Then with the belt of truth and the buckle around your waist, notice with the breastplates of righteousness in place. I'm ready for battle. I'm getting ready. I'm getting suited up. You're putting on your armor for the day. You realize the things that's coming against you, verse 15. And with your feet, fit it with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. I know my purpose. I'm ready to run. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to be able to kick to do whatever you got to do for the glory of God. I'm standing firm. You know, one thing that you learn is that God's armor, there is no armor for our back. 
God never intended for you to turn your back on the devil. Our armor is all in front so that we come against him, come against him, come against him, and not turn your back because he'll backstab you. Hello. We go forward in the name of Jesus. Notice he says the readiness of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can, notice, extinguish all the fiery arrows of the devil. When the devil says, look, <clears throat> this is for you. I hate you. I hate you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that one's for you. And I hate you. Now, there's a war. You didn't even see the arrows coming. You didn't even see the message the devil sent you. You just feel the frustration. And your kids wake up and there's an arrow for them. And everybody's walking on eggshells because the devil is trying to destroy your home. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Verse 16. And with it, notice you can distinguish all the flames and arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Arm yourself with the word of God. This is your strength. This is your power. El poder del Señor es la palabra de Dios. Hallelujah. That's your strength. Rebuke the devil. Quote scripture to him. And tell him, leave now in the name of Jesus. You begin to quote the scriptures of God against the enemy, he has to flee. Even when the devil tried to tempt Jesus, and Jesus says, You're not every, you know, the morsels that you're trying to give me, he says, I'll give you to eat. Look at all that I've given you. Look at all this I'll give you if you just worship me. And the Lord says, God, no man lives by food alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It's not by bread. It's not by food that... I'm going to be happy, even though I've been in, in a fast for 40 days. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. In other words, when you claim the scriptures, this is what God said, and God said, and the Lord said, and Jesus said, and the Holy Ghost did this, and the Holy Ghost did Jesus. Man, the devil don't want nothing. He knows he doesn't have the power to confront you. You know, every time you get up, you begin to pray and say, Lord God, right now. And yet, the word of God, you take that sword and just say, in the name of Jesus, start waving it around. That's your power, is the word of God that brings life. The word of God that brings truth. The word of God that brings healing. The word of God that brings deliverance when I trust in the name of Jesus. And pray, pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit, asking God, begin to ask God to give you the gift of tongues and, and the gift of blessing so that you can pray in the spirit and get up and begin to praise him in your heavenly language and telling him, oh, Lord God, what a day you have made. And you can just get up and say, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah to you, Lord God, and begin to just praise him in your heavenly language and say, I come before you in the name of Jesus. Bless this day, Lord God. And trust him in the name of Jesus. Pray in the spirit. Notice, in all occasions, in everything you do, in all kinds of prayers and your requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep, keep on praying for all the saints. Praying for the things that are going on because the devil, like the Bible says, he never slumbers or sleeps. He's always out like a roaring lion trying to devour you or your children or those around you. How can I deceive you? How can I destroy you? How can I undermine you? How can I bring unhappiness in your life? How can I bring tension between a daughter and a mother and a father and a son or siblings together? How can I bring dissensions between you? How can I make you unhappy? And yet you say you're going to church and you believe in God. But yet I have the power to destroy your joy. Don't let him. Don't let him. The devil is a liar. He's a liar from the beginning. He's a counterfeiter. And Jesus gets all the glory. 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God is good. Pray also for me, Paul said. With a notice, wherever I open my mouth, whenever I open my mouth, the word may be given to me, so that I will notice fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel. That you will have that favor with God, that you will begin to share and quote the scriptures of God. And you say, you know what? I'm standing on the word of God. I tell you, when I first got saved, God used to wake me up at night. I would wake up, I'd be sound asleep, and I would wake up, and I'd be, I guess, praising the Lord in my sleep, dreaming that I'm preaching or something. And I wasn't a minister yet, but I was doing a lot for God. And, and I would wake up, and I'd go in the living room by myself. There's a house, everybody's asleep in the house. My children are asleep, my wife's asleep. And I would go in the living room and just begin. And I'd pray, pray, pray. I'd get on my knees, and I, I'd begin to pray for the Lord. Just pray for whatever revelation that he's given me, whatever assignment that he's given me, so that I know what I'm going to do. I, I'm trying to find my purpose, and I'm asking God for that purpose, and he would wake me up. I would put the Bible right on the living room floor, and I would stand on it by faith. And I would say, Lord God, this may seem silly to you, but I'm standing on your word. I'm standing on your promises. I'm standing on your goodness and your mercy. Let your word illuminate me. Let your word saturate me. Let your word fill me from head to toe. Let your word become alive in my heart. Let your word comfort my strength. Let your word give me power. Let your word give me vision. Let your word give me peace in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would pray for the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And I'd go back to sleep and I, I couldn't sleep. But I'd be just praising the Lord. And you know what? It was amazing. When I would wake up, I wasn't tired. I didn't go throughout the day. Oh, I got no sleep last night. No, I would be so wound up, blessed. Because that was God. That was the Lord. And still, I, I get that at times, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm preaching, and I wake myself up. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. And I'm looking around. Where, where, I'm in bed, man. You know, I'm preaching in my sleep without knowing, and I wake up talking, talking. And I go, man, it's amazing when you just say, Lord God, I want to trust you. I, I, I want to find favor in you, Lord God. And that is a blessing that if you... If you can find that favor in God for your home, for your families, for your loved ones, oh, man, what a joy it is to serve the Lord. You know, 40 years for me, and, and it's just like yesterday. It's like yesterday, boom. And amazingly how God does things, I mean, he does things that are, are really unorthodox. I mean, things that you would never imagine. I share with you, and, I, and I'll close with this. It was such a blessing. I got up to go to work. Oh, I worked at the harbor. I got up to go to work, and I, I, I went, and I stopped at the gas station. And in that gas station, at that time, the pump was right by the street. From here to the edge of the stage was the street. And I'm standing right here, right next to the sidewalk, pumping gas. The street is Gale and Hacienda. And I'm stopping, and at that time it was a Texaco gas station. And I'm stopped there getting gas. And from way up there I see a fire engine coming. And it's, ah, really loud coming towards, towards me, going down Gale. And I said, Lord God, wherever they're going and I'm pumping gas, Touch them, Lord God. Bless them. And, and the ambulance that's going there, Lord God. Bless whoever they got to go and help and rescue, Lord God. Touch them and bless them. And I'm pumping gas. All of a sudden, the second fire engine is coming from way out there. 
But this fire engine didn't have its siren. It was just using the big horn. Just the horn was just so loud. And every time I would see it, I would hear him hit the horn, and it would hurt my heart. And it would hurt my heart. I said, wait a minute. What are you trying to tell me, Lord? And I'm hearing this, this fire engine just blowing the horn on the fire engine. And then I, I stopped pumping gas, and I started looking at the fire engine coming towards me because I'm right on the corner. And I said, show me what you want me to see, Lord God. Let me understand. And I could feel every time he, he hit it, it hurt my heart. It hurt my heart. And I seen the fire engine going around the cars. The cars weren't pulling to the side because he didn't have the siren on. So they weren't moving to the side. So he was going around the cars, coming towards me, heading to where he had to go. And I'm looking at the fire engine going, man. And all of a sudden, as I'm, oh, Lord God, show me. And the Lord spoke to me for the first time in my life. And I heard the audible voice. He said, you see that fire engine? And I'm shocked. I'm just standing there. Cars and traffic are all over. And I'm standing there in the corner hearing from God, getting a vision. My heart is hurting. I'm just going, what in the world? And here he says, see that fire engine going around the cars and going around the cars? And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, I see. And he says, that's like you. I've called you. They've got a destiny. They've got to go and take care of this problem. Just like I called you. There are people that are going to try and stop you. Go around them. Go around them to try to stop you. But I called you. I said, what? I called you. That week, I called you to preach the gospel. The fire engine passed, and I just prayed right there. I said, Lord. Woo. I was blown away. I went to work. I was a, a foreman. And everybody was looking at me saying, what's wrong, JC? What's wrong? They didn't understand. I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. Because once I opened my mouth, ah, the power of God was all over me like this for days. For days, I was like this. Nobody knew it. But I could feel it, man. It was like I'd go to sleep and... I felt like Moses coming down the mountain. And it was amazing how God can do miracles. And I submitted. I said, yes, Lord. Because I, I got saved. All these guys said, oh, I want to be a pastor. How about you? I said, no, 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 no. I just want to preach the gospel. I mean, I just want to share the gospel and share my faith, enjoy my life. I'm a Christian. Praise God. No. Out of probably 40, 50, 60 guys that we all got saved at the same time, only two of us became pastors. Me and, and Pastor Juarez, Pancho Juarez from Calvary, we became pastors. We're the only ones. The rest of the guys, none of them that I thought were going to be pastors. It was amazing and how God does things that we never know. But be prayed up because you'll never know when you are going to get a vision. When you, that God is going to reach out to you with a purpose. And don't think, well, he's going to do it in church, and I'm going to be in church raising my hand. No, no. It could be right in a busy street, right in an intersection. God can do it going up an elevator or coming down the elevator. God can do it when you're waking up. It, you don't know. But this is a gospel truth. When he touched me and he called me, I was standing on the corner with traffic and cars going all over the place. And I said, God, you're amazing. But what was happening to me in my life, no one could understand. No one could see. But I knew what was going on. And why did every time that fire engine honk, it hurt my heart. Ugh. So I just stopped pumping and just kept looking. And it took about a week before I could finally start really talking and, and sharing and seeing what God was doing. Let God bless you. God is a God of miracles. I have heard him. I have, I've seen things that he's done. And, you know, that's why I'm a believer. That's why I wouldn't change for nothing. You, let the Lord 
for your home, your families, your loved ones. Begin to pray. Begin to lift up the word of God. Begin to trust what's in here. That's your life. This is your life. This is the antidote of life, the word of God, by the power and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's what makes you who you are. This gives you character. It gives you wisdom. It gives you discernment. It gives you life. It gives you vision. It gives you purpose when you trust in the word of God. And the word of God will bring life to you and joy. I pray for the joy of the Lord to be with you. So pray that God will bless you. Don't let the devil come in and undermine your homes, your loved ones, your family. Fight the good fight in the name of Jesus Christ. Apologize to one another and say, in the name of Jesus, things are going to change because I'm standing on the word of God. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Why don't we all stand in the name of Jesus? We thank the Lord for all of his blessings. And I pray that God will touch you, that God will bless you, that God will encourage you, that you will just say, man, I, I just want to find my purpose in serving the Lord God, and I want to bless people. I want to just enjoy, enjoy what God is doing in my life. I pray for you. I pray for your families. I pray for your loved ones. I pray for all of your dreams. I pray for your homes. And for those of you that are watching us through the internet, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. And may the Lord give you a miracle. May the Lord answer all your prayers. May God give you strength and stability. Remember that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And allow the Holy Spirit to touch you. And I pray for God's anointing to be with you. I pray for deliverance and blessings. Remember, this election is probably one of the most crucial elections that we've, we've ever experienced in the history of America. We can become a socialist country if we're not careful. And we will lose our jobs and we will lose a lot. And that's why it's important. Vote your morals for God. Vote your morals for God. And we thank you for watching. Until next week, from all of us at Lake Hills, praise the Lord. Give him a clap offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Give Jesus a shout. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. We thank the Lord God for all of his blessings. Le damos gracias a la misericordia del Señor y pido que la bendición del Señor esté con ustedes. Que esta semana es una semana de riqueza, de ánimo en el Señor. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance like never before and give you a peace from heaven like never before. I love you in the Lord. Go in peace. And remember... Tell someone about Jesus and remember to love one another. I love you. God bless you. May God fulfill all your dreams in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe in you.